Blessed be the Lord and blessed are you because you are ready to listen, to listen from inside, to see the heart, the heart of God. We bless you. It's, it's so good to be able to share with you. Some of you are um, newer <clears throat> to this uh, YouTube channel, you've been listening only for a short while. Maybe you jump to this month. There is uh, way more uh, behind that some of it is going to help you lay some foundation as far as walking with the Lord, knowing who He is and knowing who you are. So uh, feel free to explore and uh, ask the Holy Spirit what He wants you to listen to. That's, uh, that's something that I really uh, trust in Him, that He is leading all this ministry stuff. Right? <clears throat> so uh, today I, um, I started to um, look at David's soul. And um, when he talk kingship, and we're thinking uh, Jesus, son of David, um, and David is the prototype of a king. Um, probably Israel never had someone like King David. The way he was prepared, and uh, he got to have all this authority <clears throat> and brought uh, Israel all this authority among all the neighbors but I'm I'm looking at David and <clears throat> I see some things that I I don't quite see in leadership see the um, the thing I want to bring today, it's, it's a, I would say, a very, very touchy subject, topic. But I think if you get what the Lord is showing us, if you get that substance, it's going to absolutely bless you going forward. <clears throat> so I'm looking at David and I see something interesting that even if he was the anointed, he was definitely the most powerful person in Israel, while he was not in the position of absolute king of Israel. He was still only in Hebron. He was like getting there. He respected his opponents. He didn't want to um, outshine the opponents. It's like, you cut. Uh, are you talking to me? I'm David. You understand? <laughs> So Abner is, is a person that is, um, it's a general. And I'm sure that David knows him since he was um, working for Saul, for King Saul. He was there, David was there for some time, um, probably working with Abner as partners. And he respected Abner and the way he talks to him, yes, Abner, you, you know I have the anointing, you know who I am, but I respect who you are and the position that you are in. <clears throat> and here's what came to me is how can you be a leader absolute exactly as God sees you, as God positioned you, but don't feel entitled to leadership? 
Do you hear me? So I looked into this entitlement because some something kept uh, bugging me as far as entitlement because what what God did for us it's so powerful and so great <clears throat> in religion and Christianity rejected this being son oneness with him rejected it because as well it's not humility it's not humble enough because they they misunderstand humility at the same time because I do understand humility which is the capacity and continually receiving from the Lord that means I am a life giver and I'm also a continuous receiving life read about Jesus every single time people were looking at him and yes they had what to see in power in authority in love in everything say well it, whoever sees me sees my father <laughs> oh this works you praise me that's all right <laughs> but it's my father's works <laughs> every single time it's almost like he didn't let that stop at himself but was only flowing into the Father. Do you start seeing what I'm saying? So I looked at this entitlement. <clears throat> and, you know, um, these researchers, they found out that this wrong type of entitlement typically leads to chronic disappointment. You feel you deserve certain things, whether tangible or intangible, yet you never get to them. So you always leave a situation with unmet expectations. Wow. <laughs> Does it ring a bell? <laughs> See, we... We are bringing lots of you and the, all the Christianity out of that religious of, oh, I don't deserve anything. I don't. Living as a pauper in, uh, in, in being an heir of the king and trying to open the eyes and say, do you know who you are? You are not that living meager possibilities and all those type of things and accepting the sickness as it's a friend as god is using it no we you wake up and wow i'm an heir of the king but some of us we go way too far on the other thing and start despising anyone else that doesn't get it <laughs> And we, some of us fall into this entitlement type of thing where, of course, I got it all. Of course, I, yeah, of course, I have the power. Oh, I, I can, I can speak to the sickness. Oh, yeah. Until the little cold comes and it doesn't go away for three months. <laughs> of course, I have this. Of course, I'm not realizing that this is not what gives you the authority and the position to destroy the enemy now now that entitlement is not so one of the i would say controversial verses in philippians 2 where he talks the mind of christ i think it's gonna help us if we really understand that so verse 5 this mind be constantly having in you and this is the mind which is also in christ jesus this is the god man fully god fully man who has always been and at present continues to subsist in that mode of being in which he gives 
outer expression of his essential nature. That means who he is on the inside, it shows on the outside. So what is on the inside? That of absolute deity, which expression of what's on the inside comes from and is truly representative of his inner being of absolute deity. So whatever he expresses, it's because of who he really is in the spirit, one the Father. But here it is. Who did not, after weighing the facts, consider it a, a treasure to be clutched, retained at all hazards, I would say, all costs, this being on an equality with deity in the expression of divine essence, but what he did? Did he change that oneness he had to the Father? No way. Did he change who he really was? No way. But he himself, empty, made void, having taken an outward expression of a bond slave. It's still God. It's still one with God. But the outside expression was of a bond slave. Very, very powerful, isn't it? <clears throat> Which expression comes from and is truly representative of his nature as deity, but it's entering the new state of existence, that of mankind. For him to be fully God and also to be fully man, he had to bring this in existence, this expression of a bond slave of the servant of all, still being God. See, entitlement or this um, defending of that position of who I am in God, it comes somehow from uh, not a full revelation, almost insecurity of who you really are. <laughs> Isn't it true? <laughs> I mean, let's say you have, you know, you have a couple of kids, right? And the kids come to you and says, uh, uh, Father, I'm your son. Father, I'm a son. You, you, Father, you know, I'm a son. Are you, are you happy with me? I'm such a son. <laughs> I mean, you'd be happy the first time, the second time, but if that's all that he says, <laughs> you're going to say, well, I understand that, and that's how you are. Can you just whack it out now? <laughs> you, you understand? You know that you know. Then you just live it. Just live. Sometimes I feel like we we try to defend the position. It's like no one can steal it or take it from us. Can anyone take it from you? It's kept in the Father. <laughs> can anyone? Oh, people that doubt it. You you want to convince them? <laughs> You think that the problem that Jesus had was to convince all the Pharisees and religious people that he is one with God? That he didn't have the problem. They, they had no faith. They, they could not see it. He wanted the insiders to see that because they were going to become new creations and follow in his footsteps. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> How can you stay 
in oneness, in who he sees you to be. He is your life. But also learn to be a king, to be in absolute authority on the outside, and also a bond slave. I think what brings this together is Jesus being the Lord of all and the servant of all. And the way he was teaching his disciples, the one that wants to be the greatest, or maybe doesn't want to be the greatest, the one that is the greatest among you, as the servant of you all. This is the way the kingdom works. Leaders in absolute authority from the Father, as sons of the living God, really understanding their position, their place, ready to be the servants of all. Isn't this humility, the capacity, the position of receiving continually more and more? Why is this important? Because who you are in, in the spiritual realm, it's it cannot be changed, it cannot be touched. But what's happening is your soul is trying to grasp. And in this trying to grasp, it tries to grab or clutch on this. And it gets it gets to be messy. <laughs> you start pretending and saying and in the soul, things that yes, it's true in 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 the spirit, but it's not said in the right order. So, this is where um, I call it soulish sonship um, gets into pride, <laughs> arrogance, um, entitlement. Now. You are not like that. <laughs> I know. That's why you're listening to this. You will never go under except so you can be lifted up. <laughs> Your soul goes under the spirit so it can be lifted up. Is the lifter of my head so I can be one with my head. This is the position. So probably I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about um, David and uh, Abner the next time because I don't want to make it too long. I really want you to look into that. Look at the soul of David. Absolutely a king. And when his... Uh, counterpart in competition and the other king that yes lost the anointing dies he is mourning he is so sad and upset really he's not taking advantage of that he could he had the anointing he had the promise come take it he respects that. He is no rush. He knows that his soul has to be ready for kingship. And this is what happens to you. I bless you. <laughs> really love you. This is how true kings are getting formed. You are one of them. <laughs>